Hello and welcome, my name is Trinan Hoshiko, and today we are talking about making a lighting diagram for this painting by Eakins of Ritter Fitzgerald. Now, I really liked this painting, it immediately caught my eye just because of this like overall warm tone and kind of glow to it, and I've been really excited to make a lighting diagram of it. I've already imported my Filmmaker Toolset template um, that is available for free from my Patreon. There's a link to it in this video's description down below. Um, I've also brought the painting in. If you are interested in making these for yourself and following along, you can grab that template and you can grab Drawio, which is a free diagram software. And then I have a guide video that will also be linked down below. that shows you how to import that template and import your own images. Um, but otherwise, let's get started. Okay, to start off with, we have a light that is coming from the left of the frame to the right of the frame, and it is making a nice light on our subject's whole right side. Now that's everything from the carpet and the chair to the person themselves. Now this light is most likely coming from a window for this painting, but who knows? For our cases, we could do it with a window or without a window in a studio type environment. But we want to have a nice light here. Now, this light isn't incredibly hard. You can see the shadows down here um, have a little bit of softer edges. It's not just like a, a Fresnel blasting on this guy. Um, it's almost like it's coming through curtains or something of the sort, so we can imitate that with a big piece of diffusion. Um, but it is bright and it is lighting him entirely. It, we can notice that it falls off just kind of behind the chair. Um, this light that is back here could be from that same source, but you'll notice that it is more of an orangish tone, whereas this is more of a whitish tone. So I'm thinking that this could easily be an artificial light. Um, in our cases, we're going to use an artificial light for it. Um, but one thing that is really sticking out to me about this is this light that's coming down is kind of a triangular shape. You can see where it falls off on the edges here. So that's another reason why I think it could be an artificial light source, you know, a lamp that's hanging above the bookshelf so that you can uh, check out all your titles in the middle of the night. And then the last thing I'll notice is that the entire thing is a little hazy. Now, I'm not sure when this was painted. I should probably look it up. This painting was made in 1895. And so there is a huge probability that this room is a study, a library, or some sort of sitting room that allowed smoking. And so that could be just simply the brushwork creating kind of a, a diffuse tone to the light, or it could be smoke in the air that's being captured in the essence of the painting by the brushwork. Um, either way, I like it because it kind of makes it a little bit softer and I want to replicate that. So now let's get started. I'm gonna start by building the room using the floor plan tools. So now with the room built, we can start placing our subject. Okay, so now we have our subject placed. We have the bookcases and the man sitting in the chair here. We made sure that the chair was angled. Let's light the subject first and I'm gonna show you how I would kind of ideally do this. We're gonna take a big diffusion sheet. I would say a six by six, something that would be the same size as a large window. We're gonna take a lamp and we're gonna shoot the light through this big piece of diffusion. Now we want it out of frame, but we want it as close to the subject as possible to maximize that softness. Now, if it gets too soft and those shadows do start to get too muddy, just move it back a little bit towards the lamp. The lamp can be over here and it can work just like that. Now that is a pretty good light for our subject. Now the issue is that will be casting onto the bookcases. And if you notice for the bookcases right here is darker. So I don't think that light because of the fall off here, I don't think that light is actually reaching back there in any significant way. The really the brightest point is inside that triangle. So we are gonna take a flag. Now for something this big, you're probably gonna need a wag flag or a floppy, you can maybe get away with a four by four, you could probably use a meat ax, something of the sort that's long in particular. And we're going to put that right here to flag off the bookcases and make sure that they're not getting light through them. 
So if you look at the shadows from the books and the shadows of his foot, the angle of the light does travel a little bit uh, front to back. So I think that this needs to be here and then we're going to angle it just slightly. I don't think it's it's severely in front of him because of the angle that we get on his face. It does have a little bit of an angle to it um, to help make sure we get that shaping. So now let's talk about lighting this kind of triangle shape in the back and how I would think that we could do this with relative ease is by getting a lamp and we're going to put barn doors on it and that will cast its light down. Now let's put a light path in for that, just like that, and it'll go straight down, pretty much. We want to have a light path for the other one, just like that. So now we have both of our light paths here. We don't want this light in the background to be coming and falling onto him, so we really want that to be top down. So how you'll have to mount this is either off of some sort of support structure that is attached to the ceiling or um, you know, as a, as a crossbar that's above and outside of the frame. Um, you might be able to get away with having the lamp placed upon the shelf. This could be something as small as like an Airy Fresnel, uh, you know, like a 150 or so. Um, something that's like small and, you know, you could clamp to a shelf. That's possible here to make this. The crossbar probably is a little bit more stable, but, you know, multiple options can work in this case. So the light doesn't cast all the way out over outside of our control. We're going to have a flag there above him. Um, that could be held by a C-stand here. It could be attached to that crossbar, as I mentioned. Um, you could have a grip rig that is clamped to the shelf. Um, if you are doing anything above people's heads, make sure that you use safety cables, weights, and tension um, as much as you possibly can add for those <laughs> um, to make sure that things are stable and secure and not going to fall on anybody. Safety cables are incredibly important to make sure they're attached to your barn doors that way when you're adjusting something barn doors don't fall on a person tension is really really great if you're going to have any sort of cantilevering and weight is good for any stand you need it so that it doesn't tip over you don't want somebody running into it you don't want somebody adjusting something and having it fall safety first everybody so this is pretty much the the main lighting setup now one thing that i want to draw attention to though is that his face on this side has just a little, little, little sliver of kind of light or, you know, tonal change there that is not just pure shadow. We are getting a little bit of um, some reflected light, it looks like. And that might be the ambient light that's coming from this light back here, if it's, you know, a, a bare bulb or a chandelier or something like that. Um, that's distinctly possible, but I want to be able to control that. So that's why we flag this off to make sure that it, this light in the back doesn't actually cast on him. Now, if you don't have a flag, if you don't have all this time or equipment or team to actually rig all of this, if you want to have that cast on him and create that effect, great. If you want to have more control over your image, this is the way I would do it. Um, so I would take a bounce from the other side and just put it right there and catch some of that soft light and even maybe even some of the light from the top down lamp and we're just going to push that right back into his face nice and easy it's pretty quick it doesn't take a lot more to set that up there we go we just have a little bit there and you can move that forwards or backwards depending exactly on what you need you could use a lamp there but i'm going for as simple as possible with adding that light back in under our control if you've ever watched me do one of these videos before, you know that I love using lanterns as a way to raise our base exposure. Um, so once again, I'm going to put a lantern here. I'm going to put it next to our big sheet of diffusion. This is supposed to be omnidirectional. You could use a space light. The idea is that we are just raising up the overall exposure in this space. And that's why we can put it coming from the same side as our key, um, if there is any directionality to it but really keeping it high up and trying to just light the entire space a little bit more. If this flag is blocking all of our simulated window light, it could make the shelves too dark. So you could kind of move it and let some of that light come through, 
or you could also take the lantern and put it on this side as well, or have a second lantern. For our purposes here, I'm just gonna have the one lantern right there that you know is kind of creating that space light, just raising our base exposure up a little bit for the entire room without changing the shaping of our light overall. Um, and then otherwise we're gonna leave that as it is. Now it's time for us to place our camera, which we just grab our camera here. We are once again, facing straight towards that wall or primarily straight towards that wall, but having our subject angled away from us. So it's not over here facing this way like this. It's instead facing reasonably straight on, maybe slightly off angle, depending exactly on how this board back here looks. Something like just like that to approximately match that frame. Now this has some spatial compression. It's nothing too crazy um, because it's a painting and it was drawn by human eye. You know, it might be more something like a 50 millimeter to give this kind of field of view and this kind of compression. Um, it could be a 35 millimeter. There, there, there's some variance here, but it's probably in the normal range. Um, and you can play with that type of look and how you want to capture the scene with lenses. If this was much more compressed and you had all the book titles like really pressed in around him in the image visually, and if this was much wider and he was surrounded by all the books, but they were pushed visually further back because of the lack of spatial compression. I'm going to go for a normal range here, somewhere between like a 35 and a 50 um, is about where I would be uh, happy with recreating this image. And one thing that I want to mention here is that we have barn doors on this lamp that is the top down lamp and we're going to use those barn doors to shape that light into that triangle shape for the top down lamp at the back um, if that is a little bit hard of a light um, you could put some diffusion in front of it um, but for this purpose i think that it would look really interesting and dynamic for the background I think this is a way you could recreate this image pretty reasonably um, using professional equipment. Now, if you had a window here and you wanted to use the window, especially if you wanted more of a uh, standless setup so that you could do more of 360 movement in the room with the camera, if you wanted to, you could just take this diffusion and lamp and put it right outside that window. You might need two lamps then, depending exactly on how far away you are and how much light you need and cast it through the window into the room um, and in doing so you can kind of use the wall as the wag flag to cut off uh, the lights beam um, and then you would still probably need to have something to mount this uh, light at the back to um, to get that um, I'd probably forego the bounce but if you wanted to be able to have the bounce in the corner um, outside of your frame um, that could work as well but let's just say it was inside the room here. Now, how can we make one of these that is a little bit less expensive and a little bit less gear intensive? So to do that, what I would say is we get rid of our six by six diffusion here. And instead, we're gonna replace that with an Octobox. Still a little bit shaped, but nice, big, soft source. Now that Octobox will have some spill control in its own right because of it having edges to it. And so we can get rid of that flag. Now across here, that bounce is going to be relatively cheap. You can get a five in one reflector, you could get a bounce card, you could get a bead board, anything like that will be able to you know, do the job basically. And then the lantern here would be nice because it would still raise that base exposure, but also wrap that soft light just around a little bit further. I would say that having this right here would be optimal for your control, but not necessarily optimal for your budget and time efficiency. So we can get rid of that flag and we can get rid of that lamp. What I would do instead is take a practical and we're going to just put some sort of shade on it and hang it off the ceiling right there. You could run an extension cable across the ceiling with some gaff tape, have it hanging down just outside of frame and have it with a shade so that it creates a little bit of that shape. We lose control, but hey, it's gonna be a lot less money. Here you need two lamps, an octobox, a lantern, a five-in-one reflector, and a practical. Here you need two lamps, a lantern, a six by six piece of diffusion, a wag flag or a floppy, a flag, another lamp, and a bounce. 
that's a lot more to manage gear wise crew wise and budget wise so these are two different options um, and either one could reasonably replicate this look now the thing that you think that i'm forgetting is that the entire thing is kind of diffused and soft you could do this a couple different ways you could um, do what they call smoke in the set which is taking a smoke machine and filling the room with that um, i really like that look although it can be a little hard to manage if you don't want to accidentally set off a smoke alarm um, you have to be careful with that um, but it does look really good. Um, if you are looking for a budget smoke machine, um, Halloween stores have them and they're pretty ex inexpensive. Um, they're not like the most efficient ones, but it will work for a smaller room or if you get two of them, you can fill up a, a bigger room, you know, pretty reasonably. There also are more professional smoke machines that are used for like DJs and venues and that kind of stuff, but those start costing a lot more money. But that is a way that you could get this effect and probably my almost preferred method. Now the other way that you could do it is with lens diffusion. And lens diffusion would be something like a black promised filter, which you've probably heard people talk about, although there are like a hundred other diffusion filters. You can make DIY diffusion filters even. Um, you, you may have heard of people putting stockings over the lens to make a really soft image. That works. That probably would be too soft for this look, but my option would be to actually combine the two. Have a really small amount of lens diffusion just to get everything into the camera a little bit softer while also having some amount of smoke to the set, because I think that changes the environment enough and makes everything have this kind of ubiquitous softness to it. When you start playing with physical diffusion like vapors and when you play start playing with lens diffusion outside of you know actually diffusing the light itself things can be really fun and really creative you can get really really unique looks and if you haven't experimented with those things yet i really recommend it now at the same time do not ever use actual smoke don't start a fire don't have i don't know your your toaster you know, smoking because your bagel got stuck in it and you're like, ah, it's perfect for cinematic um, images right now. Don't do that. Real smoke is not only really dangerous to breathe, but it means there's something that is too hot. You do not ever want to have real smoke. Only use fake smoke from fog machines. Um, you can also get things like fog in a can, cloud in, fog in a can or cloud in a can it's sometimes called um, i've used those before and i really like them although they're a little bit less sustainable overall and so um, they're not my favorite but they are easy to bring to set if you just need it real quick and dirty um, on the side of lens diffusion look up black promist look up um there's some really great charts that Tiffin has that shows the different kinds of effects you can get with different ones. Some of them lower contrast, some of them have more halation to the lights. There is just a wide variety. And so don't pigeonhole yourself into just one single type of diffusion, um, whether that is actual like light diffusion, lens diffusion, or physical diffusion, um, just you know, see what you can do and experiment with it because it's really fun to start manipulating the environment and your images in those ways. Um, but that about wraps up what I have today for this image. Um, I hope that you learned something about creating an image like this one. And thank you to uh, Mr. Eakins for this wonderful, wonderful painting. I think it's just an absolutely exquisite portrait and I've been really excited to talk about it. If you like videos like these where I go over the lighting for an image or how you could recreate an image using filmmaking techniques on a higher budget or lower budget side, um, please give me a like down below. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm so that I can reach new audiences because I want to really grow this channel and talk to even more people about more lighting techniques. And you can subscribe for upcoming videos about tools and techniques for lighting, cinematography, and micro-budget filmmaking in general. Like I said, you can go over to my Patreon and grab the Filmmaker Tools template that I have for Drawio. And while you're there, you can also subscribe on Patreon where you'll be able to vote for upcoming video topics. You can also find affiliate links in the video's description for the kinds of tools we've been talking about using here. These affiliate links, if you're interested in purchasing something, help support this channel at no extra cost to you. As always, 
I hope that you have a really wonderful week ahead of you. Stay safe out there and do something kind for somebody. Thank you.